Hi, uh, my name is Doug Creighton, and along with my graduate assistants Emmett Flasher and Amanda Rubel, this is a short video clip which discusses uh, safe manipulative procedures for the costovertebral and costotransverse joints, i.e. the rib joints. Um, before we actually show the manipulative technique, let's first just make a quick comment about uh, adverse reactions as it relates to thoracic manipulation, which we'll demonstrate uh, in another video. The worst things that happen during a thoracic manipulation is spinal cord injury and, interestingly enough, pneumothorax. Both of those types of injuries occur because manipulative practitioners use either excessive AP force when manipulating the thoracic spine in a supine position or excessive PA force when manipulating the thoracic spine in a prone line position. What we'll be demonstrating is a prone line rib manipulation technique and it's one of the most common ways to manipulate ribs with a patient in prone. And the adverse effect that, a ha that happens with regard to rib manipulation is excessive force in an anterior direction, an excessive PA load on the rib, which ends up bending the rib, and then the rib snaps. So what you'll see as I demonstrate this technique on Amanda, is you'll see how we take up slack in the rib with a slow loading mobilizing force. This will cause some distraction and a little bit of roll gliding at the two rib joints, the costovertebral and costotransverse joint. And then you're gonna see a manipulation which purposefully slides on the skin. There'll be a small element of ventral direction to the manipulation, but predominantly it's a manipulation where the hand will slide along the skin in a lateral direction which does not bend the rib. And that's what keeps this technique safe. That's what gets you an element of joint stretching at the CV and CT joint, um, but no problems, no excessive bending load at the actual rib bone. So Amanda, if you would come in please, let's demonstrate the technique. You're a patient in a prone line position. Okay. And if I'm going to manipulate ribs on the patient's left side, first thing we do is we find the spinous processes. Then we have to stabilize the vertebral segments so that they do not move, and the actual rib joint, the CV and the CT joint, does move. So here's the spinous processes. Now my cranial most hand now is going to slip just to the right of them and press in a posterior to anterior direction on the transverse processes again on the right side of Amanda's spine. This is going to stabilize the vertebral segment from rotating as I manipulate the rib joint and our manipulative load will land on the costovertebral and costotransverse joints. So here's an example. Okay? We find the most prominent aspect of the rib. Okay? The most dorsal aspect of the rib which is the rib angle and then we take the rib where we feel there's stiffness at the rib joint and we mobilize it in a ventral, caudal, and slightly lateral direction. Now at this point, after we've taken up slack with this mobilizing movement, here's the manipulation. We spring the rib slightly forward, but predominantly laterally. This prevents all bending of the ribs. Let me move my hand down a little bit more. Press the transverse processes on the right side of the spine in a posterior to anterior direction. This left rotates the spine just a little bit and stabilizes the spine against right rotation as I manipulate the ribs on the left side. Take up the slack with a mobilizing movement and there's the manipulation. Take up the slack, there's the manipulation. This is one of the few manipulations where your hand actually ends up in a different spot and you purposefully slide on the skin. There's no other manipulation that I'm aware of where we, where we teach the technique where there's a sliding on the skin. But it's that very sliding in the lateral direction that keeps the rib from bending, and keeps a rib from fracturing. And that's how you safely manipulate the costovertebral and costotransverse joint.